Okay, if statements. If statements add considerable power to your to your programming ability, um, so so there, it, it's virtually impossible to re write any significantly complicated useful program without some kind of operation that sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't depending upon certain conditions. You know, if you've got a button, if they click the yes, then it'll do one thing. If they click no, they it'll do something different or it doesn't do something unless they click the button. In order to have that kind of conditional behavior, you need an if statement. And, and there are two, really, when you're learning a la uh, programming languages, there, there are two things to really understand. There's the syntax and the semantics. So I'll start, the syntax is, is like the spelling rules and the, the grammar, the punctuation. The semantics is the behavior. I'm going to start by explaining the syntax of a conditional statement. So whenever you start a conditional statement, you're going to say if. And, and that's just a keyword in Java that, that indicates that, hey, I'm starting a conditional statement. And then you have some round brackets, okay? And inside of that round brackets, you should put some sort of a true-false expression. Some expression that Java will evaluate that will sometimes come out to be true and sometimes come out to be false. And then an open squiggly bracket and a matching close. And I'm just going to kind of push this out for, for a little bit. Now, where a lot of people get confused, a lot of new programmers, is sometimes they'll forget the squiggly brackets, and that's one way to do things. So um, I'm just going to say something to be executed and a semicolon, okay? So if you have one statement, one instruction, followed by a semicolon, that one single instruction will be executed if this expression evaluates to true. But if it's false, then Java will skip over this expression or I'm sorry, this, uh, this execution statement, this instruction, and continue on after it. I almost never do it without the squiggly brackets. It's just a really good practice to put the squiggly brackets in. Because if I have multiple statements, multiple instructions, each ending in a semicolon, then the squiggly brackets bind them together so, and, and to what they call a block of code. And so that if the expression is true, it will execute the whole block of code. But if this thing evaluates to false, it will skip the entire block of code. And you notice that in between the squiggly brackets, I have indented. Um, it is common for, for beginning programmers to not indent anything and to just type all of this at the same line. And then they lose track. They forget the open or they forget the close. Or sometimes they'll, they'll do the open and close and type a semicolon right there. Oh, that's terrible. Java will not complain about this. If it says if, and then some expression to be evaluated, if that evaluates to true, it'll execute up to the semicolon. Oh, well, there's the semicolon. And then it'll do resume execution right afterwards. So, so if I've got a semicolon right here, it's almost as if I don't even have any of this code right there. So be careful about that extra semicolon. And, and I would say always use the squiggly brackets. Um, it's just a good habit. And always indent the code between the squiggly brackets. Now an else clause. You can tack onto the end of an if statement uh, an else clause. It's optional. What this says is if the expression evaluates to true, do these things, 
But if it evaluates to false, do these other things, okay? It does this or this, it'll never do both. But either way, whenever it is done with whichever one it's going to do, it'll resume after this closed squiggly. And if you really wanted to, you can say else if. some other true-false expression. So what does Java do here? Java first evaluates the first expression. If it's true, it'll do this stuff and then come down and never even look at this other part. But if the first expression evaluates to false, it'll come down here and it'll check this expression. If it's tr true, it'll do this other expression. Okay? So it'll only do this one if the first one is false and the second one is true. Okay, And you can tack on another else if you like. And if you like to, you can make this also an else if. And you can keep going as long as you want. So you can have multiple conditions. It first evaluates the first one if that's false, it'll evaluate the second one. If that's false, it'll evaluate the next one. And as soon as it finds a true statement, it'll execute the stuff with the mat, uh, between the squiggly brackets and then jump all the way down past the end of the if-else clauses. So if this evaluates to true, it'll execute these two statements, skip over both this and this, and resume afterwards. Okay, so your assignment, um, I'll make another short video and explain your assignment. Hey, look, our solve method, it returns.